My name is Chin Lai Sun. My daughter and I now have to leave our city Jiangsu in China for Vancouver in British Columbia. It is the year 1880. We are leaving our country because my husband was recruited to build the railway in British Columbia. In the letters my husband has written to me, he described British Columbia as having these enormous mountains that form the Western Cordillera. It seems like such a beautiful place. Hi, my name is Chin Su Ling. I'm 10 years old and I have lived in China my whole life. I am an only child. My mother recently told me the news that we are moving to Canada. At first, I wasn't too thrilled because I didn't want to leave my friends behind. But now that the date of departure is approaching, I'm actually excited. I'm most excited to see my father. I haven't seen him in one year. I miss his arms wrapping around me when he is giving me a hug, his storytelling during dinner, and his loud laugh. One of the main concerns I have is the practice of our religion in Canada. My family and I practice Buddhism, which is the main religion in China. I am not sure that we will be able to practice and celebrate our holidays in our religion when we move. From what my husband has told me, we may need to convert. This makes me feel mournful. Even though it will be hard, I am willing to sacrifice losing my religion than staying here in China. I was talking to my sister this morning, and she believes that the move will be the best thing for our family because there is more money to be made in Canada. In the big cities, there are more job opportunities, and the wages are much better than here in China. We leave tomorrow. As I am packing my bags and putting away all the small things I won't be able to bring to Canada, I am thinking about how different my life will be. I will need to make new friends and go to a new school. I have never been on a boat before. Apparently, most people get very seasick with seasickness. Anyways, despite all the bad, I'm really excited and can't wait to see my father. Goodbye, China. We are now getting on the most tremendous boat I have ever seen. As I see the land becoming further and further away, I feel lost. Our boat is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on its way to the Great Canadian West. The entire trip will take about six weeks. The journey will be expensive because there are hundreds of people on the boat. I am very patient to see my beloved husband. We have finally arrived. After an excruciatingly long journey, it is nice to be on steady land. At our arrival, we are immediately required to pay a large amount of money for some reason. Something about head taxes? I heard my mom using big words trying to explain it to me, but what I understood is that Canada is charging an expensive tax for each immigrant from my country. After my mom paid for our entry, we immediately went to the address given by my dad. I'm guessing it is our house. On our way to our new house, we saw the school I would be attending. Seems like a nice place, but it's still school, which isn't very exciting. So far, our lives have improved drastically since our short arrival in Canada. For example, Su Ling used to have to work after school in awful conditions to make extra money for our family. But now there are laws against ch child labor and minimum wages, so Su Ling can't make extra money for the family. Also, my husband is coming home in a couple of days from work, which will be thrilling considering I haven't seen him in a year. Someone came to our door. This man had a letter in his hand, shook my hand, and gave me a couple of Canadian coins. I sat down in the living room and I read the letter. It said, "Dear Chin Lai Sun." Your husband Chin Luk Tan Singh has died while building the Canadian Pacific Railway due to the explosive nitroglycerin. Here are two dollars for your family. My sympathy, Sir George Mackenzie. I felt tears come to my eyes. My husband has died. We all came to Canada to live as a family, and now this will no longer be possible. Su Ling is currently in school, so I will have to tell her when she gets home. <laughs> Who wants to earn some danger pay? Some boat fare for the wife. All you have to do is go down in the tunnel with the nitro and set the charge. And my, and my wife, you pay boat. Okay, okay, I, I, I do, I do really good. You see. Right. Now pour it in the hole gently. Understand? Any little bump, and that stuff will blow. That's the third one we lost this month. Cochran, get another volunteer. Due to the harsh taxes, my mother can't afford to send me to school anymore. In our small town, I've made a few friends, but most of the girls don't talk to me just because I am Chinese. They don't seem to accept me just because of where I am from. I came home today to my mom crying in the living room. She told me about my father. 
He was what I was looking for to when picturing myself living in Canada, and now he's gone. About one year has passed since my father's death. My mother and I have been living in Canada for a while and love it. We have found so many benefits in lifestyle, economically, socially, and in happiness. We both see how Canada offers so much to immigrants and let people truly start a new beginning. I have made many friends and I have noticed that more and more people from China are moving to Vancouver. Now that we, the Chinese, are growing, the population of British Columbia, I found that integration is much easier for the family. Even after many setbacks in the beginning, such as racism and discrimination, I believe that moving to Canada has been the most difficult thing a family can do. I now see that the Canadian life isn't what it seemed in the advertisements. Instead of bringing families together, Canada breaks them apart. Before immigrants come to Canada, they should have a clear idea of what to expect.